thanks for an absolutely smashing weekend. Wonderful company, lovely food, and your wife makes love magnificently. <laughs> Sir, but did I hear you correctly? What's that, old chap? Well, you've been a guest in that gentleman's house for the weekend, and you, you, you tell him to his face that his wife makes love magnificently? Yes, that's right. But do you think that's quite correct? Well, no. Not exactly, no. I mean, but he's such a nice chap, I wouldn't like to say anything to offend him. I say, that was rather thoughtful of you. Come on, come on, I ain't got all day. Oh, um, Guildhall, please. Fares, please. Any more fares, please. Fares, please. Going all the way. Why don't you go down front, sir? You'll see better. a stopwatch? Well, what were you doing going to her flat anyway? She's one of our clients, isn't she? I have to vet them, don't I? Oh, vet? Is that the new word for it? I can't fix them up with the right partners until I find out what they do and how they live. Mm. Like the young widow at the tobacconist. You must have vetted her at least 50 times. Oh, good. I only keep going in there for me shag. Look, it's my job to find out what the female clients do. You should look after the men. Oh, don't be stupid. I know what they do. Oh, don't try and joke your way out of it. What would you say if I started vetting all the male clients? I'd say, go to help them. You rotten beast. I'm going to help you. 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 I'm going to help Come in. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right, sir. We're not ashamed of being in love, are we, sweetheart? No, dear. And what can we do for you, sir? Uh, well, it's about your advert. I, I was looking for a wife. And you couldn't have come to a better place, could you, my little baby? No, indeed. It looks as if I shall have to leave you for a little while, darling. That's it. Business before pleasure, my little dove. You'll excuse us, won't you? See you soon, sugar pup. I'll be counting the moments till I can get at you again. It's amazing, isn't it? Ten years we've been married. You'd never believe it, would you? Oh, wonderful. I wouldn't mind a wife like that. Like that? Nah, we find you something better than that. We'll find you something more suited to you. Won't you sit down, Mr... Uh... Oh, Muffet. Um, Bertram Muffet. Muffet. Well, we'll have to find you a crumpet to go with that, won't we? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Never mind. Now then, Mr Muffin. Uh, Muffet. Muffet, yes. Our charges, and very reasonable they are too, are uh, two guineas registration, two guineas for the introduction, and two guineas when you click. Click? Get married. And if you click without getting married, it's four guineas, all right? Oh, yes, that's fine. Bertram Muffin. Muffet. That's it, yes. 
Well, we'll just get a few details. Age? Oh, uh, 17, I think. 17? Well, I thought the younger she was, the longer she'd last. No, no, no. I want your details, your age. Oh, 27. 27. And what are you interested in? Same as most chaps like to do, I suppose. And that is? Well, I don't know. I've never done it yet. You should try it. It's lovely. Uh, <coughs> now, you see, what, what I'm trying to do is to find out what you like to do so that I can fix you up with a girl who likes it too. Oh, yes, I would like a girl who likes it too. Yes, it is handy. Uh, hobbies? Oh, well, my main one is making model aeroplanes. Model aeroplanes? Yes, out of milk bottle tops. Milk bottle tops? Uh, yes, they're not flying models, of course. No? You surprise me. Uh, any other hobbies? I rather like collecting book matches. You know, all the different packets. Well, I don't think we'll have much trouble finding you, a girl that likes making model aeroplanes out of milk bottle tops and collecting the odd packet. Oh, good. Right, well, that's the lot. Oh, wonderful. Uh, what happens now? Come with me. is feed the information into the computer up here and after a few minutes the lady suitable to you will come out there. What's with that little slot? She must be very small. No, no, no. Just, just the lady's particulars, not the lady herself. This is a fantastic piece of machinery, you know that? Cost a bomb. This is a miracle of modern technology. Here we go. Bottle tops and book matches. What a catch. Ah! <laughs> oh, yes, I think this is the ideal one, Mr. Bliss. <laughs> Here we are, then. Oh, gosh, that was quick. Yes, that's the beauty of it, you see, Mr. Muffin. Muffet. Yeah, well, I mean, a fellow can spend his lifetime trying to find the right girl. This machine does it in a couple of minutes. Shall we see who the lucky lady is in? There's been a slight technical error here. This one is definitely out of circulation. What's the idea? Why her? Why not? She's one of our clients. I know that, but she's no good. You seem to find her very satisfactory. All right, all right, you've had your little joke. Let's have another one. You seem to forget, Sydney dear. I didn't choose her. It was chosen by that miracle of modern technology. Or perhaps you'd like me to explain to our clients how it works. No, no, no. We don't need you, darling. Oh, and I want to see that the gentleman's fixed up properly, dear. It's a pity about that, Mr. Muffin. A great pity. Oh, has your computer gone wrong? No, it's been too accurate. This lady's hobby is not compatible with yours. Oh, but how? Well, she likes to make Christmas decorations out of milk bottle tops. And you realise what that could lead to? Fights every morning about who's going to have the top? Oh, I'm sure we wouldn't. I'm telling you, it would bring your aircraft production to a standstill. Oh, nonsense, sweetheart. I think it's a lovely idea. Can't you just imagine these two young people sitting in front of a fire every evening, doing things with their tops? Well, I'm quite ready to have a go at it if she is, Mr. Bliss. <laughs> She's really all right, mate. To have a go, I mean. That's Don't it. be a spoil sport, Sydney. Her number's on the card. Let me call. I'll do it. <laughs> Darling. That's it. Hold it. Oh, excuse me one moment, will you? Esme Crowford speaking. Can I help you? Oh, this is Mr. Bliss of the Wedded Bliss Agency. You've got a nerve calling me after the way you behaved last night, I must say. Yes, and I'm very sorry if I bothered you, Miss Crowfoot. The fact is that we have a young gentleman here who's very anxious to meet you. Well, if he's anything like you, I don't think I care to meet him, thank you. She's all excited about it. I don't know what you think I am or expect me to do, but it'll take more than a dozen tired daffodils to do it, I can assure you. Well, it's very nice of you to say so, Miss Crowfoot. We do our best to give satisfaction. How about this evening? Yes, that's fine with Mr. Muffin. Muffet. How about the Parkway Cocktail Bar, 7.30 this evening? Lovely. Fine. Yes, not at all. It's a pleasure. You're very welcome. Well, that's that then. 
Two guineas registration fee, two guineas for the introduction. That's uh, four guineas altogether. I'll give you one of our introductory cards so that she knows you come from us. Oh, yes, thank you. And you might like to have our little booklet, given a few tips on courtship, a sort of uh, do-it-yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon? Never mind, there we are. You know? Oh, yes, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. The Wit to Woo by Sydney Bliss. Interesting. Yes, well, that's all then. A very, very best of luck to you, Mr Muffet. Uh, muffin? Um... Was there something else? Well, just my change. I gave you a five-pound note. That's right. There's uh, two guineas registration, two guineas for the introduction, and 16 bob for the booklet. Oh. Oh, yes. I s yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, not at all. There we are. Don't forget, Parkway Cocktail Bar, 7.30. Ta-da! Sophie? Now, come in, Sophie! should try it. If you want to, Emily, but personally, I don't think a pair of steps is going to be the answer. If I'm to help you sort out your problems, I must insist on absolute candor. Do not be afraid to use natural words for natural functions. You won't easily shock me, I can promise you. <laughs> so let's have all the dirty linen out and give it a jolly good washing, eh? Now, who's going to be first? You, Mrs. Drelly? Well, really, I suppose the trouble is we just can't get on. Now, let's try to be more precise. Get on what? A horse? A bus? Oh, no. You know. Well, we just seem to have rows all the time. Ah, oh, rows, yes. About what, precisely? Oh, everything. Like the way he went on about that far chair I got him. I bloody think so and all. I mean, look at it. Must have been made for a bloody midget. I couldn't get half me arse on it. Uh, hardly the cause for a row, Mr. Dreary. You must learn to turn the other cheek. <laughs> In a manner of speaking, so to speak. <laughs> I didn't come here for a laugh, you know, mate. I can stay at home and look at her for that. Uh, yes, well, there's usually some deeper underlying cause for stress in these cases. Of course there is. Uh, let's face it, you, you see, our problem is about our sex. You shouldn't have any trouble in that direction. After all, you're one of each. Some people are far worse off, you know. You're trying to be funny, mate. No, no, certainly not. No, you don't. You don't seem to get the point, mate. You see, the, the, the trouble with my wife is, is, she won't have relations. Oh, I think that's hardly fair, Mrs. Dreary. After all, it's perfectly normal to entertain members of the family from time to time. No, 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 no. She, she, she won't have. Intercourse. What? Well, you must chat about something. What he's trying to say is that we never have it. That intimacy never takes place between us. Ah, I see. Well, of course, you should have mentioned that in the first place. Obviously, that's the basic root of the problem. Yes. Oh, well, of course. I mean, it naturally follows that everyone should lead a well-balanced sex life. Oh, that's the trouble. It isn't well-balanced. He's five stone heavier than me. Mm, yes, oh, I see. Yes, I can understand the position you've been put on. Uh, put in. Of course, Stone the Crows, what's he talking about? But don't you see, at the moment, you are a dead weight. And you're a bloody dead loss. Don't talk to me like that. Here I am, trying to help you. Help me? You couldn't help a dog find a bloody lamppost. How dare you? You come to my office using ridiculous words like relations and intercourse without having the slightest idea of what they mean. I don't know what they mean. You're around the bleeding twist. That's it. Get out of my office, you hear? Get out. We're getting out. Don't worry, mate. Mr. Snooper, I must ask you to keep your voice down. You can be heard all over the building. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm simply trying to give this wretched couple some good advice. Advice? You couldn't advise a constipated cow to take a laxative. Sir, sir, if you and your wife would care to wait outside, I'll, I'll see you in a moment. Snooper, these incidents are happening far too often. Well, I'm really very, very sorry, sir. No, oh, it's not entirely your fault, I suppose. They should never have employed a bachelor to give advice to married couples. Oh, but I know all about married couples. My father and mother were one, you know. I'm delighted to hear it, but it's not good enough. And unless you're prepared to get married yourself, we shall have to dispense with your services. Is that understood? But I'm a confirmed... Bachelor, I don't know any women. Then find one. 
Go to a matrimonial agency or something. But do it soon. Married? It'll disrupt my entire life. Well, that's all right then. Age, habits, hobbies, likes, dislikes. Now then, did you say you've been married before? That's right. Twice. Uh, your wife's uh, dead? That's right. I see. First wife died from eating mushrooms. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So was she. Second wife died from a fractured skull. Fractured skull? How did that happen? Wouldn't eat the mushrooms. You wouldn't eat the mushrooms. Thank you, Dr. Crippen. Don't call us, we'll call you. Thank you. Joking. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, the Wedded Miss Agency sent me. Mr. Philpot. That's right. I'm supposed to meet a Miss Jenny Grubb. You wouldn't be. Jenny is my daughter. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness I've come to the right place. That remains to be seen. Thank you very much. Jenny is in here, Mr. Philpot, having tea. You haven't had it, have you? Oh, no. No, this is the first time we've met. Tea, Mr. Philpot. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I haven't. Afternoon. Nice day. This is Mr. Philpot, who wishes to marry Jenny. I say, steady on. I mean, give us a chance to get to know each other first. <laughs> See how we hit it off, eh? Mr. Philpot, you may as well understand here and now that there will be no question of hitting it off before marriage. No, I just didn't want you to get the wrong idea. Actually, I only went to the agency for a bit of fun, really. <laughs> if it's fun you want, I fear you've come to the wrong place. Yes, I can see that. Well, you may as well meet Jenny now that you're here. Oh, thanks. Well, nice to have met you all. She's here, Mr. Philpot. This is Jenny. How do you do, Jenny? No physical contact yet, please. Jenny, get Mr. Philpot some tea. Oh, what? Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Oh, this is jolly nice. Sugar. Sugar. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, Jervis. Oh, beg your pardon. Slip. Stop. Oh. 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 <laughs> Mr. Philpott. Yes? Would you mind resuming your seat before you wreck the entire house? Yes, I'm so sorry. Ah. You seem to have done one of your saucers in. No matter. It's only Crown Derby. Oh, it's all right, then. Jenny, please get Mr. Philpot some more tea. You must think I'm awfully clumsy. Yes. But we will overlook your more obvious shortcomings and get down to practical matters. Now, regarding the period of courtship... Yes? You'll be permitted to see Jenny once a week, in company of myself, of course, and other members of the family. Well, even though I wouldn't be able to see her alone. Oh, I don't think that would be at all wise. Jenny has led a very sheltered life and has had little or no experience of men. Really? I have done it. Which one? Put it in. Oh. The sugar. Ah. And what is your financial status, Mr. Philpott? Ah. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, actually, I have a private income of about 3,000 a year. Is that all? Well, it's enough. Oh, not enough to run a big house of this size. There's myself, you see, and other members of the family to provide for. We don't live extravagantly, but we do like to live well. 
minute, just a minute, just a minute. Just, just supposing I was mug enough to marry her, do you really think I'd live here? With, with this lot? Naturally. We have always been, and we intend to remain, one big happy family. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm afraid it just wouldn't work out. I mean, they'd never fit in with the way I like to live. <laughs> All night parties, uh, strip poker, pot smoking. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid not. No, just say goodbye and thank you for the tea. <laughs> Wedded bliss agency. Let us bring a little happiness into your life. Oh, hello, Mr. Philpop. How was the introduction? <laughs> yes, well, I'm sorry she wasn't quite what you were looking for, Mr. Philpop. But I can't vet them all personally, you know. I never even saw Miss Grubb. Her mother did what? Well, yes, yes, and I sympathise, Mr. Philpop. Uh, hang on, hang on a minute, will you? Maybe I can put you onto something a little more amenable. Ah. Uh, ah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have Miss Adams here. Now, there's an absolute cracker for you. Just a job for you, and she can cook, too. Yes? Right. The phone number is 663-404-271, right? Not at all, Mr. Philpop. We aim to see that all our clients get satisfaction. And you. Here's me crow foot. Got to do something about that, see me? Sophie, darling, I've been thinking. Well? About me fixing it up for that young muffin fella to meet Miss Crowfoot. It's all wrong. I don't like the sound of this. What are you up to? Nothing. I phoned her up and cancelled it. And what happens when he goes down to the bar to meet her at 7.30? Oh, yes. I've forgotten about that. Well, that's a nuisance, that is. I'll have to go down myself and explain. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. <laughs> I'll come too. Why not? Oh, no, wait a minute. You can't. I just remember we got that snooper fella coming at 8 o'clock. Oh, well, in that case, I'll go down and explain to Mr. Muffet you stay here and see Mr. Snooper. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't be fair, would it? I mean, after all, I got him into this mess. It's up to me to get him out of it. Well, I've got a few calls to make on the way. I'll be seeing you. When will you be seeing me? Sit in place. I'll fix you, Sidney Bliss. Oh, hello. <laughs> of course I remember you, Mrs. Bliss. Yes, we last met at that wedding when I guarded the presents. Yes, it was a pity about that. No, they never did find the bride again. Such a nice girl, too. Well, I rang you, Mr. Bedsop, because I want someone followed. Mr. Bliss, actually. My husband, yes, that's right. Oh, well, if you'll describe him for me. Rotten. Cheating. Lying bar... No. No, Mrs. Bliss. A physical description, if you please. Yes. Yes. The general appearance of an ancient and dissipated walnut. And what's more, I can tell you where he'll be at 7.30 this evening. At the Parkway Hotel Cocktail Bar. Right. Just you leave it to me, Mrs. Bliss. Check. Roger, over and out. <laughs> No filming tonight, Miss Sally? No, worse luck. I have to meet some photographer from the publicity agency here. Ah, some more pin-ups, eh? That's it. Sally Martin, unknown star of stage, screen and television, pictured in her home with everything about her but her clothes. How do you do? Meeting you is the most exciting moment of my life, straight up. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm from the agency. Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Well? Uh, Muffet. Bertram Muffet. 
Uh, how do you do, Mr. Muffet? Oh, fine, thank you. It's the most exciting moment of my life, meeting you straight up. Really? Oh, well, uh, it's nice to meet someone who knows who I am. Um, they told me at the agency, you see. Uh, don't go and spoil it. I wonder if you would do me a pleasure. What? Um, the pleasure um, of having a meal somewhere. Oh, uh, well, it's really very sweet of you, but uh, it's not really necessary, you know. Isn't it? No. Look, I don't have a lot of time, so let's go straight back to my place and get down to it, eh? Some blokes have all the luck. Excuse me, have you had a fellow in here looking for a woman? We never get any other kind. Don't miss about. Small skinny fellow, bit dopey looking. Name of Bertram Muffet. That's him. He's just left for Miss Martin. Martin? Sally Martin. Oh. She's taken him back to her place to get down to it. Pardon? That's what she said. Did she? And I called him a dope. But you don't have to worry, she's working this evening. Oh, it's very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, anyway, it's better than Regent's Park. Regent's Park? Yes. That's where I did it last time, on the bridge over the canal. Really? Mm, it was awful. Freezing cold, and people kept stopping to watch. I'm not surprised. I suppose so. Still, it's annoying. Now, that's my bedroom, and through there's the kitchen and the bathroom. Oh, you'll want to go in there, won't you? Oh, no thanks. Uh, not just at the moment. Please yourself. Only most of you blokes seem to want one in the bath. In the bath? Certainly not. Oh. Well, I've got this big sponge, you see. And a loofah. I'm sure you could do something with that. No, thank you. OK, OK, you're doing it. Now, where would you like to start? Well, really, I'm quite happy in here. Fine. Well, you get all ready, then, and I'll go and get out of these clothes. No, 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 don't. I mean, there's, uh, there's no hurry, is there? Well, I haven't got all night. Well, I don't want all night. I mean, well, you look absolutely lovely as you are. Miss, you must be joking. No, really. I like it. Oh. Well, it's very sweet of you to say so, but let's be sensible about this. I mean, I'm not crazy about stripping off, believe me. But it's what people want these days. So I say, if they want it, let them have it. about it? Oh, uh, everything is all right, officer. There's nothing wrong at all. You see, I was looking for a man who I was following. Really? Well, in that case, sir, I think you'd better come along with me. Uh, no, officer, I don't think you quite understand. You see, I was following a man and he went into the cocoa. Well, I followed him into the cocoa. Oh, why, 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 
they get any shorter, they'll have two more cheeks to powder. Taxi! Taxi! Roger and Mansion. Watch it. Don't use language like that to me, mate, you deaf old twit. Go to that address, quick as you can. Come back, you fool! Here! Taxi! Follow that cab! Worried. I'll take this off as soon as you're ready. Do you like it? It's all off. Looks more like all off to me. Where do you want me? Well, I really don't mind. Well, you say you're the expert. How about on the bed? No. Well, where then? Well, I mean, couldn't we just sit and talk for a bit? Sit and talk? What about? Anything. I mean, I just didn't expect things to happen so quickly. Just a minute. Is this the first time you've ever done this? Yes. Oh, no. Don't say they've sent me a learner. But I know what to do. I mean, I've read books and things. Well, I suppose everybody's got to start sometime, haven't they? So let's give it a try, eh? I only bought this outfit this morning. I hope it shows enough. Oh, yes, plenty. Well, if it doesn't, just yell out. Now, I'm... How about lying on the rug to start with? Throw me a cushion, can you? That's it. How's that? Wonderful. Well, come on, then. Where is it? There's what? Your camera. Oh, but I haven't got one. What? What's that in your case? Oh, that's my model aeroplanes. Your what? Model aeroplanes. I thought you'd like to see them. Why would I want to see your model aeroplanes? Ah, well, they told me at the agency that you make Christmas decorations out of milk bottle tops, and that's what I make my aeroplanes with. Christmas decorations out of milk bottle tops? That's right. I've never done that. It must be fun. Oh, yes. Yes, it's, it's really great fun. You really must try it. But just who at the agency told you all this about me? The chap who runs it, Mr. Bliss. Um, this one. The Wedded Bliss Agency. This is to introduce Mr. Bertram Muffet. Yes, it should be Muffet. You're not a photographer. Oh, dear me, no. I'm an undertaker's assistant. An undertaker's? Oh, oh look, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Muffin. Muffet. But there's been an awful mistake. You see, I think you've met the wrong person. You're Miss Crowfoot, aren't you? No. You see, I was going to meet a man from the photo agency. And when you said you were from the agency, I naturally thought that it was you. Oh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. But when I saw you, I thought... Oh, what an idiot I've been. Excuse me. But you don't have to go. It wasn't really your fault. I'm terribly sorry. Wait a minute.
<laughs> you, I said I never wanted to see you again. Help me, help me. Oh, oh. What's happened to you? You're all wet. I'm sorry. I didn't know anybody else I could turn to. What oh. have you been doing? Come on inside. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Soaking, what have you been doing? I couldn't help it. I just couldn't face going through life anymore without you. What do you mean? I tried to drown myself. Where? What in? The canal. Canal? What canal? What does it matter what canal? They've all got water, haven't they? Well, that was a silly thing to do. Those canals are filthy dirty. Who cares about that when you're going to drown? Why didn't you drown? I forgot I could swim. Come on, look, get those wet things off before you catch your death. Oh. Fancy. Oh. No one's ever tried to do away with themselves because of me before. I'm flattered. You should be. This suit cost me 30 quid. I didn't really mean it, Sidney, you know, about not wanting to see you again. Thank you. I don't want much. Just to worship at your feet. I've got better bits. I'll put this by the fire. Have you wet your trousers? Eh? Oh. Oh, yes. Well, I mean... I went in feet first, didn't I? Had my shirt. Then we'd better have it off, hadn't we? You took the thought right out of my mind. That is correct. Oh, do come in. Thank you. I'm sorry Mr. Bliss can't be here. I'm Mrs. Bliss. Do sit down. Oh, thank you. That's it. You don't mind discussing your problems with a woman, I hope. Oh, no, not at all. My mother was a woman, you know. Really? I hope you don't mind my coming so late, but I wanted to wait till everyone had gone home and the streets were clear. I wouldn't like to be seen coming here, you understand. Oh, you don't have to be embarrassed coming to a marriage bureau, Mr. Snooper. And the mating instinct is in all of us. Everybody's doing it these days. I know. I have to spend half my time listening to how they do it. I beg your pardon? I am a marriage guidance counsellor, Mrs. Bliss. And my superior feels it would be advantageous if I were married. Oh, I understand. Though I must confess, uh, I find it difficult to believe that anyone as cultured and distinguished looking as yourself would have any difficulty in finding a wife. That is very true, of course. And up till now, I've had no need for one. Miss Dempsey, my housekeeper, caters for my every need. Uh, about the house, of course. Uh, cooking, cleaning and scrubbing. She does all the scrubbing. So what you really want is a wife who can satisfy your superior. Good gracious, no. He has his own wife. Yes, of course. It, well, I'm quite sure that we'll find someone suitable for you. A woman with charm and intelligence who can grace your table mm. and run your house efficiently. Yes. Bring me a cup of tea in bed. Oh, of course. I always fancy it in the mornings, you know. Really? Oh, yes. Gets the system going. I am a man of regular habits. Once a week, I dine at my club. Once a week, I play squash. Once a week, bridge, and so on. Everything in moderation. Yes, of course. Well, I think once a week is enough for anything, don't you? Precisely. Well, I'm sure that we'll be able to find someone suitable. And being a virile man, of course you would like to have a child. Oh, no. A fully grown woman, I think. Excuse me, I'd like to use the phone, if I may. I'm, I'm awfully sorry to disturb you, but this is important. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm awfully sorry to trouble you, but uh, would you have a sixpence for two threepenny bits, please? One chance. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, here 
Here's your receipt, Mr. Snooper, and we'll be getting in touch with you very soon regarding an introduction. Thank you very much, and I must let you get home now. You're looking rather tired. Well, it is a long day, and Mr. Bliss and I are always at it. Well, as long as it's not through overwork. <laughs> Wedded Bliss Agency, Mrs. Bliss. Ah, Mr. Muffet. Uh, oh, hello, m m Mrs. Bliss. I'm afraid there's been a bit of a mix-up. I seem to have met the wrong girl. Yes. Um, no, I, f I got the right place and time. Uh, but there was this girl who thought I was someone else, and I thought it was her. Yeah, and we didn't find out her mistake, and I mean my mistake, until she got most of her clothes off. But I don't understand this, Mr. Muffet. Didn't Mr. Bliss meet you at the bar? No. Are you sure? I see. Oh, yes, I think I know what he's doing, Mr. Muffet. Look, you still want to meet Miss Crowfoot, I take it? Good. Why don't you go to her flat? Yes, I'll give you the address. Um, Rogerham Mansions, yes. Dunham Road. Right. Yes, and thank you. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Bliss. Goodbye. Are you feeling better now? No, but I might if I didn't have to keep looking at that thing. Oh, don't you think he's rather gorgeous? Gorgeous? That's Gripper. Griper would be more like it. Gripper Burke, he's a wrestler. Get away. I thought he was a ballet dancer. Well, he and I had quite a thing once. I don't know what it was, you know, but he had quite a hold on me. Probably the Indian Deathlock. Yes, well, then he had to go to America and wrestle. I haven't heard from him since. Obviously the same as me. All out for a submission. Now, don't start that nonsense all over again. Nonsense? Haven't you heard? That's what makes the world go round. Yes, well, I've done my share of keeping it going in the past. Now, let someone else have a go. Me, for instance. Come here. No, Sydney, don't. <coughs> Sydney, you mustn't. Not in your condition. Right now, I couldn't be in a better condition. No, Sydney. Oh, come on, darling. I'm not just on the make. I really fancy you. No. Oh, blimey, why not? Because I am keeping myself. Well, that's all right. I don't want to keep you. I mean for the man I marry. You're making a big mistake. Why? Well, it's like a car, isn't it? What is? Well, I mean, you, you lay it up for a few years, suddenly you want to use it and you find it's all rusted up. True. On the other end, if it has a regular service, no trouble. Look, it's not that I don't want to, Sid, but... Yes? Well, who can that be? Never mind. Don't answer it. Well, I have to. It might be business. Well, what do you think this is? I'll get rid of them as quick as I can. Enough of it over there. Besides, I missed you too much. Oh, I'm sure you did, Gripper. Oh, put me down, please. You're hurting me. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. Nobody can say Gripper Burke don't fight fair. No, no. Oh, no. there's me, darling. I can't wait to get started with you again. Yeah, oh, well, I'm sure you can't, but not tonight, Gripper, please. What? Here. You haven't found somebody else, have you? Because you promised. No, 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 of course not, no. Oh, well, that's all right then. Second's out, second no, round, going no, out. Please, no, no. Ah. Hey. Ah. No, 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 no. Gotcha. Oh. My favourite old, remember? Yeah. It used to make you turn to jelly. I don't really feel like turning to jelly tonight, Gripper. That's all right. We've got all night. No, dear, I really am awfully tired. Ah, all right, then. There, that's better. Here, let me tell you about my last fight in the States. Man Mountain Dawson, they call him. Man Mountain. More like anti he was. <laughs> yeah, he kind of wrestled with his blooming conscience. <laughs> anyway, in the first round, he comes out roaring and bellowing like some animal. <laughs> Yeah. Go on. Those are men's clothes. You got a bloke here. No, of course not, Gripper. 
Where is he? I'll kill him! I'll tear him apart! See, I told you there was no one here. You think I'm daft or something? Yes. I... No, 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 I mean no. Well, tell me then. What were those clothes doing here? I was just drying them off for someone. Yeah. Well, he better not come back while I'm here. Or he'll find me waiting for him. Honest, Gripper, I haven't seen any other men since you went away. Honest? Yes, really. Oh, good evening. This is Miss Crowfoot's flat, isn't it? Yeah. What about it? Uh, well, they said if I was to come here, it would be all right. Oh, they did, did they? Yes, Mr Bliss said uh, that she'd be just what I was looking for. Oh, well, you'd better come in, hadn't you? Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm from the agency. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You're from the agency, did you say? Um, yes, that's right. Um, Muffet's the name, Virgin Muffet. <laughs> I believe. Yes. What? What's he doing in a hospital? What? Look, darling, I love you, I worship you, I adore you, and you're my very favourite model, but not for this particular job. Why not? No bristles. Huh? You're flat-chested. Adrian, please. What do you mean, flat-chested? Well, I... Sally, did you hear him? Am I flat-chested? Am I now? Well, I don't know. Turn around and let's have a look. Oh, ha, ha. You've never worried about it before. Look, I have told you, darling, for this particular job, they want watermelons. All right, then. Go and find someone else. I don't care. Look, look I wish I could find someone else. That's why I asked you if you knew somebody. You think I'd tell you? Huh. Find your own watermelons. Oh, OK. Look, darling, I love you. You know that. But if I can't find any watermelons, I'm out of business. Hello. Are you still there? I'm sorry I was interrupted. Look, could you tell me which hospital he's in? Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Excuse me, but I saw an advert for someone to share a flat. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, come in. Thank you. There's um, two of us here at the moment, but we could use a third. It'll be about five pounds a week each. All right. Oh, yes. At least it will be as soon as I can get another job. Oh, what do you do then? Well, I was a stuffer. I beg your pardon. Oh, the sausage meat. In a sausage factory. Oh. Yes. You know, putting it in. Why did you give it up? Well, it wasn't a very interesting job, you know. Besides, I wanted to get away from home. Well, I'm sure you'll find something else. Would you like to see round the flat? Look, darling, I've got to go. If I don't find a girl, I'm going to lose this job. I wish I were dead. Uh, this is Adrian. Oh, how do you do? Darling girl, where did you come from, Evan? No, Fulham. Hmm? Oh, Fulham. Wonderful. Beautiful Fulham. What does he mean? Oh, darling, let me rest my mince pies. Oh, they are great. Knockout. What? They are all yours, I take it. Oh, don't be a fool, Adrian. Oh, yeah, of course, they must be. All right, darling, get your gear off. What? Your clothes. I want to have a good butcher's at you. <gasps> oh, do you think I am? Adrian, for heaven's sake, stop. She isn't a model, you know. Really? What do you do then, darling? Well, I... I was, uh... Shouldn't tell him that if I was you. As a matter of fact, she's not working at anything at the moment. Oh? Well, you are now, my darling. Oh. <laughs> Here, 
I never quite gathered, mate, but uh, what's supposed to be wrong with you? Me? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Why? There must be something wrong. No, I'm fine. He's over here. Oh, thanks. I promise I'll only be a few minutes. Go! Oh, I say, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't see you. Gosh, you. Yes. Well, nobody can accuse us of having dull meetings, can they? But how did you get here? Well, you left your card that night, and they told me where you were. Oh, I see. Oh, excuse me. I came because I, I wanted to apologise for what happened in the flat that night. You? But I'm the one who should apologise. I behaved like an absolute clot. No, it was really all my fault. If I'd known who you were... Oh, nonsense. Anyway, nothing did happen, did it? No. What must you have thought of me, taking all my clothes off like that? Well, I can tell you now, I did feel a bit shaky. <laughs> Especially when you asked me where I wanted you. <laughs> and you should have seen your face when I laid down on the rug and told you to get on with it. <laughs> and I turned and bolted. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I just wanted to say sorry. I'll have to go now. Oh, no, look, wait. Look, I get out of here tomorrow. Could I see you again? Well, if you really want to. Oh, rather. I'd like to see a lot more of you. Well, there isn't much you haven't already seen. Oh, no, I don't mean that. No, I know. Well, if you'd like to give me a, a call sometime. As yes, soon as I get out. Fine. Well, bye for now, then. Oh. Yes? Um, don't think I'm being nosy. But there is one thing I just have to know. I haven't got another girl, if that's it. <laughs> no. But do you really make model aeroplanes out of milk bottle tops? Yes. Oh. Good. Well, I'll start saving mine for you, then. Bye. Here are plays out of milk bottle tops. Look, mate, I couldn't tell the hearing, but is it really right, all that stuff? What? Well, you know, her stripping off and laying on the rug and that. Oh, yes. And you turned and ran? Yes. Blimey, and you say there's nothing wrong with you. And the next is... Why, Mrs. Bliss, what a pleasant surprise to come in. Sit down. Thank you. Well, what brings you here? What can I do for you? Not a marital problem, I trust. <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly, Mr. Snooper. You see, I'm not married. Yes, well, of course, that would be... What? You mean you and Mr. Bliss are living in sin? Well, not that either, unfortunately. I don't understand. Well, for business reasons, he thought it would be better if we appeared to be husband and wife. Of course, we always had an understanding that one day we would marry. At least, I had an understanding. How long has this been going on? Ten years. Oh, how terrible. Oh, my dear Mrs. Bliss. Y Miss Plummet, actually. Miss Plummet? Oh, how nice. And you would like me to talk to Mr. Bliss? Oh, no. I'd never marry him now. No, really, I came to talk about us. About us? Yes, you see, I've been studying your case very carefully, Mr. Snooper. And frankly, I feel that I'm the only one who comes anywhere near satisfying your requirements for a wife. Oh, well, well, I, I don't know about that. I'd have to... Oh, please, listen to me, Mr. Snooper. I'm sure you'll agree that I'm not one of your flighty young women. Oh, no, no, not at all. So, as far as sex is concerned, I'd like to make my position quite clear. Yes, well, the position is uh, half the battle, isn't it? <laughs> As your wife, I would run your home efficiently, I would preside over your table gracefully and await any further demands, hopefully. Well, that is a most generous offer, Miss Plummet. Oh, I promise you, Mr Snooper, you'll find me generous in all things. Yes, well, I'd like a little time to think about it, of course, you understand. Of course, sir. I've been a bachelor for so long, I can't help wondering whether I'd be very satisfying as a husband. You know. I know. But on the other hand, with you, I can't help feeling there's a chance it might actually work. 
Well, don't worry. If it didn't, we could always adopt a child. What do you mean you're not coming into the office anymore? Oh, Sophie, I need you here. Well, oh, that's nice, after all I've done for you. Now, listen. So, so, Sophie. What's the matter with her? What have I done? Mr. Philpot. What can I do for you? I'll tell you what you can do. You can give me my money back, every ruddy penny. Why? What's up? What's up? First of all, you sent me to see a girl called Jenny Grubb. How about that? Yeah, how about that? I never tried it. A mouse. I've got more sex in my little finger. <laughs> then if that weren't bad enough, you put me onto that Miss Adams. An absolute cracker, you said. Well, that's quite true. I vetted her personally. A good cook, you said. Yes, that's right. She had something cooking, all right. In the oven. In the oven? Yeah, by my reckoning, for about five months. At Regulo 10. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's all right, I'm in the clear. You won't be if I don't get my money back. Wait a minute now. Mistakes can happen. Look, I tell you what, I've got another one here for you. A dead right one for you. The name's Esme Crowfoot, and believe me... No, you know what you can do with Esme Crowfoot. I don't, as a matter of fact, but if you care to find out... Give me back my money or I'm going straight to the police. The police? They'll never find you anything any good. Hey, fraud! That's what it is. It's like obtaining no, money no, under no, false no, pretenses. No, no. steady on there, Mr. Fulpert. Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't you just come and sit down a minute? Excuse, excuse me, customer. Come in. Never mind the customer. Just give me my money back. I... Oh, excuse me. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all, miss. Can I help you? Well, I just popped in to say that you could take my name off your list. You? You're on our books? Don't you remember me? No. Jenny. Jenny Grubb. Here. Yeah. Jenny Grubb? I came round to your place for tea the other week. Yes, and you weren't very impressed, were you? No. Well, yeah, yes. It's just that you were dressed rather differently then. <laughs> My parents believe in covering me up. They're an old-fashioned pair, you know. Nonsense. They're a beautifully fashioned pair. <laughs> Just, just hang on a minute, Mr. Philpott. It's my client, if you don't mind. You uh, say you want to come off our list. Does that mean you fixed up with someone? Well, no. No one special. It's just that I got a job. I'm a model and a nice new flat to live in. So I thought I'd have a bit of fun. And you couldn't have come at a better time. Let's go in the other office and talk about it. Oh, no, I can't do that. I've got a modelling job in half an hour. It's for a new kind of body stocking. And I can't get out of it. Come in here. I'll get you out of it. No, I must go. Here, I got the old jam jar outside. Let me give you a lift. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Come on, then. <laughs> just, 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 haven't you forgotten something? You wanted your money back. Me? What would I want my money back for? You've done a splendid job here. Have I? Splendid. <laughs> Grub. Jenny Grub. Oh, look at it. Miss Jenny Grub. Age, 24 years, hair brownish, eyes, didn't notice. Height, five foot six, never had any. Hey? Eh? Oh, hobbies. Yeah, well, that'll soon be changed. Well, this is it. All right? Mmm, sexy. I oh, you, you'd say a lumber room was sexy. And if I was rummaging through your odds and ends. <laughs> in here again. Come on out. Oh, it's the porter's darn thing. It's always sneaking in here. Shoe cooking fat. Shoe. Cooking fat? Yes. They can't call it that, surely. Well, that's what it sounds like. Come and get comfy. Here, yeah. are, you, are you sure your flatmates won't be back? Oh, not until after 11. God, I really fancy you, Jenny. Oh, and I liked you the first time I met you. Oh, let me get at you. Oh, what the hell am I sitting on? Ooh. Oh, yeah, they're not yours, surely. No, they're gays. She really is a flatmate. <laughs> Come here, you little raven. Oh, steady on. There's plenty of time. And plenty of inclination. Oh. Mm. Hmm? What are you doing? I'm looking for the zip. Oh, you've got a sauce. Well, where is that darn thing? As if I tell you anyway. It's on the other side. Oh. That's better. <gasps> oh! What's the matter? Oh, you've got cold hands. Jenny. 
Terry. <gasps> oh, sorry, Jenny. I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you were here. Sally, this is my night. Wednesday. I know. It's all right. I'm going out. As soon as I find my blue sweater, anyway. Have you had it? Not yet. No, I have not had your blue sweater. And if you must go on looking for it in here, will you please put something on? Oh, sorry. But I've got to find it. Oh, I know. I bet Gay's had it again. Do you want me to close the door? Yes, please. Oh, Terry, I'm so sorry. Not at all. Good job she wasn't looking for her pants. Or was it? Oh, Terry. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> oh. I found it. Oh, Ray. Oh, sorry. I won't bother you anymore. Do you want me to close the door? Yes. yes. Terry, I'm so sorry. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. <laughs> you are sweet. Oh, Jenny. Oh, Terry. Oh, oh blimey. <laughs> Men, I've had them up to here. Oh, no. Gay, what are you doing here? Well, it is my flat, isn't it? Oh, yes, but it's Wednesday, my night. Oh, I'm sorry, but I've had another flaming row with Adrian and I just couldn't stand him any longer. Gay, I've got a friend here. Oh, well, you don't have to worry. I'm going to bed. I'm glad this was your night. I'd hate to be here when it wasn't. Oh, Terry. Oh, Jenny. Give me a number between one and ten. Seven. You lose. Get your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I won't be a minute, will you? Do it yourself. I'm busy. <coughs> if that's Adrian, tell him to go to hell. Oh. Mm. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, I could scream. <coughs> oh. Oh. Oh, right, where is she? Where is that cow? Gay is in her room and she doesn't want to see you. Well, I want to see her. Jean, I'm trying to entertain. Oh, how would you do? Hello. Open up there. I want to talk to you. Adrian! I'll break the door down, I will. Adrian! What? That is a cupboard. Oh, sorry. Open up, I want to talk to you. Well, I don't want to talk to you. I'll stay here all night if I have to. I had a nasty feeling he was going to say that. Darling, you know I can't exist without you. You seem to be able to exist with all those other models you keep messing about with. Oh, they mean nothing to me. You know that. Oh, Terry. Ah. Mm. Oh, good. Company. Oh, I'm fed up with this. I might as well be back home. Yes. Oh, hello, Jenny. Is Sally ready? No, but do come in. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm barging in. Do go on with what you were doing. Chance would be a fine thing. <clears throat> Quite a nice evening. Charming. I thought it would rain earlier. Really? Yes. Anyway, we'll probably get it tonight. We'll be bloody lucky if we do, mate. Hello, Bertie. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. Oh. Well, what are we going to do then? Well, if you'd like to stop in and make some aeroplanes, I've brought some tops. Uh, no, I don't think that would be a very good idea. Not tonight, Bertie. All right. If that's the way it's to be, I shall kill myself. Ah! I will. I what? mean it. Oh, no, no, Adrian, don't, don't. I shall shoot myself. Go on, shoot the lot, and maybe we'll get some peace. Goodbye. Oh, stop it, somebody! <laughs> oh, I <cannot>. ah!
Aren't you getting tired of following me about? Excuse, gentle sir. Me no spoken. Very good, the English. Oh, good. A Bombay Bond. Ha <coughs> ha. <laughs> Fooled him that time. 1502. Suspect left Cock Inn. Saloon bar. And proceeded back to office. Sophie, you're back. Only to clear my desk. Oh, come on. Surely you're not still suspicious of Esme Crowfoot and me. I no longer care where you go or what you do or to whom. Oh, don't be like that. How about some dinner tonight? Just like old times. You mean like old time? And then I paid the bill. All right, so it's my turn tonight. No, thank you. Anyway, I'm having dinner with Mr Snooper at his home. Alone? Certainly. I hope you got your tin drawers on. <laughs> Mr Snooper and I are to be married. Married? Are you going to in mad? You don't know anything about the bloke. I know he's a gentleman. They are. I knew there was something wrong with him. Well, have you any alternative suggestions as to my future? Yes, of course I have. Well? Stay here with me. It's been all right the last ten years. Goodbye, Sydney. Oh, wait a minute, Sophie. Don't go like that. Don't leave me like that. I'll be lost without you. So will the business. I need a woman, you know that. Then I suggest you put the details on the appropriate card and stick it in your computer. All right, go then. See if I care. Marvellous, isn't it? Give a woman the best years of your life and look what happens. Mr. Bleeding Snooper. Snooper? What's he got, anyway? Snooper. Snooper. Percival. Percival. Oh, blimey, that's a good start. Age 43. Handsome, well-mannered, sexually backward. Oh, that's him, all right. Doesn't know whether he's coming or going. Hobbies. Reading, walking, playing bridge and poking. Around antique shops. 45 Bulstrode Avenue. Occupation, marriage guidance counsellor. Fancy. Well, I think it's time I did a bit of marriage guiding myself. Hello, Esme. Sydney, you've got a nerve ringing me. I, I was wondering if you could do me a small favour, darling. No, not that. Could you meet me tonight? Well, I can't. You know how jealous Gripper gets, even more so now we're engaged. Engaged? Congratulations. Look, darling, you know I wouldn't bother you unless I was absolutely desperate. Now, go on, please. Well, all right, but as long as you promise to behave. That's a good girl. Meet me outside the Parkway Hotel, 8 o'clock, right? And wear your sexiest see-through. Whatever for? Well, just because I can't touch doesn't mean I can't look, does it? Hey? <laughs> all right, see you then. ta -da. I'll go. This is the lady I was expecting. Very good, sir. Ah, oh, Miss Plummet, how nice to see you. Do come in. This is Miss Dempsey, my faithful old housekeeper. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you, Miss Dempsey. Mr Snooper has told me how well you look after him. I've always done my best, I'm sure. Oh, treasure. I'd be lost without her. Oh, well, I hope you'll stay on after Percival and I are married, Miss Dempsey. Married? Oh. What on earth's the matter with her? Oh, surely you know. She's in love with you. In love with me? Of course. You must have felt it on occasions. Well, certainly not. No. I've never laid a finger on her. Well, go for a glass of sherry. <laughs> Throw me aside like an old worn-out slipper. After all the years I have slaved for him. And if I can't have him, nobody else is, if I can prevent it. Ah! Ah! I always knew it would come in useful one day. <laughs> it's a delightful house, Percival. I shall be very happy here. Good. I think you'll like the first floor front as your bedroom. You mean we... We'll be sleeping together, then. Oh, good gracious, no, my dear. Why on earth should we, with a house as large as this? Well, yes, but I think it's a wife's duty to be close to her husband for the warmth and comfort it brings. Oh, you don't want to worry about that. I've got the electric blanket. Oh, how nice. Besides, sharing a bed together, we might be tempted to indulge in carnal pursuits. <laughs> Rather, yes. 
And we don't want any of that nonsense, do we? Oh, you're very strong-willed, obviously. But it's a temptation I would find very hard to avoid. Nonsense, my dear. Do as I do. Plenty of exercise, cold baths every morning and a good dose of salts at night. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Hang on a minute. I've just got to make a quick call. Pay the cab. Hello. Pleasure to see you, Jimmy. <coughs> Hold on. Grimmer, it's for you. Oh, excuse me. A pleasure. <coughs> Here. This is a friend. I just thought you ought to know. An oversexed nut by the name of Snooper has just lured your fiance into his house. What? Where? Bolstrode Avenue, 45. And if I was you, I'd get my skates on quick. I think you'll find this wine amusing. Ah, that'll be Miss Dempsey with the maiden course. She always does something rather special for us. Come in. Miss Dempsey! Miss Dempsey! Yes, what is it, love? I mean, sir. <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. I'll have mine in the kitchen so you two can be alone. It's only fair. What do you mean? You always eat in the kitchen. That's right, I always eat in the kitchen. <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be leaving you now, then. Oh, uh, will you want your electric blanket switched on tonight? Well, of course I will. Why shouldn't I? Oh, well, we don't always like it, do we? I mean, do you? <laughs> Have I said? Miss Dempsey, what are you talking about? I'm sorry. I wouldn't like you to get any ideas about me and Percy. I mean, Mr. Snooper. He's always behaved like the perfect gent with me. Except when we, uh, well, you know. I'm sure he has. Miss Dempsey, what are you saying? I've always been good to you, haven't I? Oh, you have, love. I mean, sir, he has to. More than good always gives me a little present afterwards, uh, after I've done something specially nice for him. <laughs> Miss Dempsey, please! <laughs> I'd better go before I say something I shouldn't. The woman's demented. Sophia, surely you can't believe there's anything in what she said? Well, I realise Miss Dempsey may be upset by the announcement of our marriage. On the other hand, there's no smoke without fire. And you can't have a fire without its being properly laid. I, I mean... I... Well, that should be just about right. What should? Never mind. Now, you know what you've got to do when you get inside? Lay it on good and thick. Oh, Sid, I can't do it. Can you think of a better way of showing Sophie it's not me you're interested in? Very well, then, but don't blame me for what happens. That's a good girl. Come on. Come on. Well, Percival, I'm willing to accept that there has been nothing between you and Miss Dempsey. She'll have to go, of course. Go? But she's been here for years. She has security and comfort here. She'd never get it anywhere else. Well, she's not getting it here anymore. It's your choice, Percival, her or me. Oh, very well, then. Oh, that's settled, then. Come in. There's a woman here to see you. A woman? What woman? Just tell him Pussycat, she said, and he'll know who you mean. Pussycat? I don't know any Pussycats. And you better tell her that, because she's waiting in the drawing room. Oh, I don't understand. She must have got the wrong house. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Madam, I think there's been some mistake. Oh, Percival, I'm sorry, my darling. I just had to come. I can't bear it any longer without you. Madam, please try to control yourself. How can you ask me to control myself after all we've been to one another? 
You who've never shown any control where I'm concerned. What? I need you, Percival. The nights of been oh, so empty. I don't care how hard you beat me as long as you love me occasionally. Oh, madam, please keep your voice down. Can be heard half over the house. Look here. I don't know who you are or what you want. Oh, what are you doing? I want you to take me. I'm yours. You know it. Take me. But I don't want you. Stop it. Stop it at once. Oh, no, you found someone else. I know it. I can feel it. Well, stop feeling it. Oh, oh Percival, how could you desert me like this? What's to become of me and the baby? The baby? What baby? I don't know any babies. I won't give you up. You're here. I want your mind. You'll always be mine. Help, Miss Empty. Help, Miss Empty. Oh, oh. what you were saying yesterday and of course you're quite right you can't run the business without me i thought you were getting married no no oh. oh. <laughs> oh well i'm very glad to hear it fancy that hey the old firm back in business well i think we ought to celebrate i'll slip down to the off license and get something oh then stick up yep Hello? Mr. Bedsop, no. what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I thought it was time I gave you a report on Mr. Bliss. Oh, you're not still following him. Oh, I am sorry. I should have told you to stop. Well, I think you'll find it all been worthwhile. Particularly when you hear whom he was with last night. Oh, I'm sure it... Last night? Oh, yes. He met Amos Esme Crowfoot. Really? Do go on, Mr. Bedsop. Sophie! Come and get it! Hey, look. How about that? Champers. Oh, very nice. May I crack it? Yes, go on. Go oh, ahead. Here we are. Thank you. Oh. What are you going to do that for? You wretch! You rotten swine! Don't think I don't know you sent that poor, wretched woman into Mr. Snoopers last night. Well, well, what if I did? I only did it because I don't want to lose you. Well, you've lost me now, for good. No, no, wait, wait. I want to marry you. You want to what? Uh, marry you? Well, I mean, that is in time. I, I, I don't want to rush you into it. Oh, all right, all right. Next week, then. You heard that, Mr. Bedsop? I've got it down. You won't regret it, Sid, I promise you. I know that, darling. Yeah, I'll tell you what, why don't we have a right raving booze up and invite all the couples we've brought happily together? Careful, that's going to cost money. So what? I know a fellow in the catering trade, and if we charge him a guinea a head, we might make a few bob. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs>
ladies and gents. I realize that our marriage has come as a bit of a shock to you all, but I would like you to know that we are delighted to have you share this great day with us, all you blissfully happy couples that we have had the pleasure of bringing together. Just to look around this room and see so many contented, ideally matched couples is rewarding itself to us for all the trouble that we have been to in your behalf. You, like Sophie and me, have been dead lucky because you've had the benefit of our expert knowledge and scientific advice. So, I am not asking you only to drink to our health and happiness, but to your own. Cheers. that was drying in your flat that night. Stop it, Gregor. Don't make a scene. So it was you. Our oh, blooming will kill you. What are you talking about? He's gone potty. Don't pay any attention to him, Sophie, darling. I'll deal with you later. You will, will you? <laughs> Don't you laugh at him, you little squirt. How dare you, old bag! Oh. Ha, ha, ha. 